Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video series, we're going to go through City Engine and learn how to make 3D models with it, build things, and then share those models with other bits of software. In this demo, I'm just going to go through City Engine and we're going to talk about um, some of the, you know, the folder structure, the scenes and the projects. We're going to talk about um, the window and what all the different things mean. And then we'll go through what some of the buttons do. OK, so we're just going to give a quick overview of that now and then we'll go into each of these things in more detail in subsequent videos. OK, so for this uh, entire series, I'm working on my own standalone system. Um, however, I do have Internet access. but I'm not working on a network. So if you are working across a network, some of the settings are going to be slightly different from the settings on my system. But I will talk about those as I go through. So I've opened up City Engine and the first thing I see is this uh, splash screen that pops up. Welcome to City Engine. There's a few different buttons on there. So you can see we can open a blank scene. If we have Internet connection, we can make a city from map data um, and then we can create an imaginary city. This is often the first thing people do. And sometimes I think it puts them off the software because they think they're just making fake cities. Um, city Engine, I think, was created to do a lot of different things. Um, so this is where some people start. We're not going to start there. We're going to just look at the software, look at the different buttons, and then we'll make our own city. And then perhaps we'll have a play with this later on. OK, so I'm going to close this down and quickly we'll just talk about the layout. So you can see we've got all the sort of the file, edit, select. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do um, up here. And each of these are to do with whatever they're talking about. So if you want to do something to a layer, it would be in here. Graph is another name for roads or streets. Uh, so if you need to change something to do with the streets, you can do it there. We've got shapes. So again, a shape um, would be something like buildings or uh, a water water feature, a forest, etc. That would be done here. There's some analysis we can do, and then we can go through all of these windows. So this is changes the layout or changes some of these windows that are visible. Sometimes we might accidentally close one of these down, and we need to open it again. When I say windows, I'm talking about this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, um, so sometimes you can close those down or you can change the layout. So at the moment, we're in the default layout. Later on, we might want to go to the rule program and layout, and that would be better suited to doing some coding. And we'll look at that um, later on. And then finally, we've got the help files. So there's loads of offline and online references. Here we've got the CGA reference, so computer generated architecture. So uh, City Engine will use something called procedural modeling, and it's like coding to build buildings. Uh, and obviously, we're not going to know all of the sort of terms or the different rules to use. So there's a reference for in there, a bit like a library of all the different rules you could use. Really useful. So you definitely want to get into that. Again, you can do that in CGA or you can do that in Python if that's your thing. Uh, we've got the help files, some tutorials, tutorial data uh, and example data. And then again, all of the forums and blogs, etc., cetera, uh, YouTube channel, things like that. Really useful to get into that. OK, so that's the um, that's like the file menus and things. We'll talk about the layout quickly. So in the default layout in the middle, biggest screen, this is where you'll see anything you make in 3D, the 3D view. Think of this like your map view in um, ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. So or the data frame, I guess. So. That's where we've got everything that we will make in 3D in a bit when we do it. On the top left, we'll have um, what we can call our table of contents. So as we add new layers, elevation, imagery, mapping, roads, buildings, vegetation, uh, any shape files or feature classes or 3D models we add, each of those will uh, come on there on a new line and we can turn them on and off, uh, change the settings and things like that. So that's all good. Down on the bottom left, we've got the navigation pane. Uh, you can think of this like the catalog window or catalog pane in Map or Pro. So again, this will look into the folder structure. OK, so. When we set up the software, we're going to create a um, a workspace or a folder that we work in. Uh, if you're working off a network or working on your standalone system, there might be um, better places to store it. Personally, even if I'm working on the network, I'll always store it. Um, in say my D drive or somewhere on my own system where I can work and then I would upload things to a network drive later on. That's just myself. Again, you'll have different uh, you know, rules for your network organization. At the moment, we can just see one folder in here called esri.lib. 
uh, I've set my default workspace. I'll quickly show you in the F drive. And in here, I've got a folder called City Engine YouTube Demo. And inside there, I've got this esri.lib, or we'll call this our esri library. So this is all the default things that I might use across multiple projects. And go in here and we can see there's a sort of classic City Engine folder structure here. Assets, bin, data, images, maps, models, rules, scenes, scripts. So this is the Esri library or Esri.lib. If there's something we want to use in our model, uh, it could get stored in assets and then we've got some assets in there. Assets could also be used by rules. So if there was a rule for something such as buildings, then you would have a building rule and that building rule, and we'll go on to look at that in more detail later, will reference things in the assets folder. So it's quite important we use this folder structure. Um, and when we make a new project, so in a minute I'll make a new demo project, we'll see that new project will be created in here and it will mirror that folder structure. So if I make a project called demo one, which I'll do in a second, we'll have a demo one project appear here and we'll see that folder structure is in there. And then whenever I'm doing any data management for that project, I would keep all of that data inside that project. Uh, just makes sense. Standard stuff, really. Okay, back to City Engine. Uh, so that's the navigator pane. So that's where, and as we build up a library of more projects, we do more and more work. It's, you can just keep all of that in there and then we can search for that in there. Okay, uh, talked about the big window in the middle. On the right, then, we've got this inspector window. So um, if I select anything, say I've got some buildings in my 3D view, they would appear in this table of contents on the left. And then when I select that, uh, this inspector pane will show me all of the information about those buildings. It will show me the attributes or what City Engine sees as the attributes. Um, and then it might let me change those as well. So if one attribute might be building height. My building might be 10 meters. I want it to be 20 meters. I could be able to change that in the inspector window. Or um, I might have to go into the... You know, there's other ways you can change things. There's always basically three ways to do it in City Engine at least. So that's an introduction to sort of the layout. I'm quickly just going to make a new project. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to click down in the Navigator pane. We can also go File and do that, but I can go down into the Navigator pane. I've right clicked in there and I'm going to click Project. And it's then going to ask me what I want to make. So I can go City Engine Project press next and give it a name i'm going to call it demo one why not and you can see that's stored in my def my workspace so this is for me in the f drive uh city engine youtube demo and this is demo one my first demo click finish and then nothing's really happened on the main screen but in my navigator pane i've got uh, demo one and again as you can see that folder structure is uh, has been created automatically. If we quickly go back to um, Windows Explorer, we can see there's a demo one project and in there I've got all of those same files. OK, so. The data management is a thing people really struggle with, I think, in City Engine, um, and it's good just to get that tied down straight away. OK, so I've got that and then I can make a new scene. So a scene is really sort of the, you can think of that like the MXD. Um, if you think of the project a bit like the project in Pro, uh, ArcMap never really had these projects, so you would have made your own uh, project file. But we can think of this like the, the Pro project and in there we're going to make our MXD. So in scenes, I'm going to right click. I can go new and city engine scene. And then um, I can call that demo, I can give it a good name. I can also give it a coordinate system. So I can click here and I can select a coordinate system from the normal list if I wish to. Um, or just like Map, just like Pro, City Engine, the scene will take the coordinate system from the first bit of data I put in there. So later, if I want to put in some data on British National Grid, or a specific UTM zone, then I can do that. Uh, one thing to note with this, I would always